Welcome to my course uh, to the history of entrepreneurship. This is video number one and we will look into the concept of stewardship and discipleship. Discipleship is a frequently and most written about subject in my works. Please consider every blog post and podcast episode as a great resource to complement this course. Especially recommend a disciple and master posted on May 29, 2015, and the one titled The Jesus Planner posted on July 28, 2015. In today's world, the necessity of adopting to the battlefield is the greatest and gravest temptation even the most devoted Christians battle with it. This makes lifestyle our first and foremost important line of fire to maintain our integrity of faith and safety of our spiritual growth and expansion. Lifestyle has an impact on our level and depth of discipleship, but most importantly, discipleship has the same power on lifestyle in our lives if we allow it. That is most important to recognize that the motivation for discipleship, therefore lifestyle change, have to be a deep, recognized and rejuvenating love for Christ himself as a person. This love has to be the motivation for change and not change to be reinforced for the sake of change. That would most likely miss the mark eventually and backfire in the life and faith of the person forced by law and legalism into a lifestyle that is not inspired by a love relationship with Jesus. But also tremendous importance is to see the value of the spiritual riches over worldly riches. While most people with the best of efforts scanning the world for methods of survival and even prosperity have to divide their attention between their relationship with Jesus and their monetary work in order to do so. Even if many will pay their tithes and goodwill offerings on the date of due, it is attached with a sense of guilt because their minds have been in other areas of life. They have been so involved with workings of this world, they arrived to church out of habit and routine and just realized they have not spent any time with their Savior during the week. Reading your devotional does not necessarily exempt you from this experience. This separation of weekdays and Sabbath days tears the soul away from its very nature. This is when Satan is having a great time because he was able to separate men from his own soul that belongs under the cover of Jesus unconditionally now. On the other hand, it really doesn't have to be that way. Work and labor being separate from men's spiritual orientation is a modern disease. It has occurred with the phenomena of making the workplace religion-free. For both non-discrimination reasons, cheap labor, lowering conflict at the workplace is a very strong one, and a growing number of workforce that consider themselves non-religious, and that's significant today. Both places and work business organizations also started promoting teaching and expecting the respect of activities and involvement that emphasizes worldly values and the importance of worldly riches. It is not popular, not accepted, not allowed, and by today's standard, it is not even legal to take your religion with you to work or to school. It does not belong to places of business and barely tolerated even in humanitarian activities. Therefore, today it is nearly impossible to monetize in your business ventures if any kind of religious ties are audible or visible. I am making a statement and I have made sure 
that none comes near my business without knowing they are going to deal with a highly and radically Christian project. I have made that statement so that none that does not feel comfortable with with it would feel it is their business to run my business. I am intending to preserve the integrity of the original purpose of my venture and that is to serve God and God's people just as a gas station deals in its choice of oil I deal in my choice of cultural, cultural background and that is my Christian predisposition everyone is welcome they must need to know ahead of time what to expect you see I have decided I refuse to live a divorced life I refuse to separate my soul's deepest convictions from my daily actions and personal accountability to my God for the consequences of my work. For maybe salvation cannot be acquired by works, but it is only faith that works can glorify the Lord. And without glorifying the Lord, man has no glory himself at all. My biggest question to you today is whether if you do glorify the Lord daily with your works of faith. Please read the following Bible verses and meditate upon them. Psalm 50, 15, 86, 12 and Isaiah 24, 15. There is quite a few more mentioned at the end of the transcript of this video and um, then please return to the downloadable worksheet titled Stewardship Discipleship Entrepreneurship 1. I have prepared this worksheet and, and you will find one at the end of every video for your personal study. Print it out and work deeply to process those questions for yourself. Don't simply look for answers that you think are appropriate. I will never read it. There is no right or wrong answers. This is supposed to be a challenge in authenticity. Dig down into your soul and find your own expressions of your inner being. Then look for guidance in the Bible. Compare, contemplate, take the honest account and grow. It is only you and the Lord having this dialogue now. And your full involvement is an absolute requirement if you wanted to make the most of this course. Blessings and see you in the next one. Aloha.